So believe me, we spent a lot of time carefully constructing this panel so that we would have different points of view uh, represented and, and, and engaged with each other. <clears throat> and I'm just going to make a comment as somebody who's listening, um, which is um, that I, it seemed to me like it sounded like the only people who were worth paying attention to in Greece was the working class. And since, as except that it was mentioned that the movement there was inspired by the Seattle revolt, which was a broad movement of not necessarily only working class people, and I think it would be useful in your next round, at the same time that you're addressing each other, for you to talk about other movements, other people, and where they fit into the perspectives that you're talking about. Um, so I'm going to just go to people in the same order. To, you can sit if you'd like. The video takers have to take that into account. Um, and we'll just, just try to, in two minutes, pick a salient point. And then you can worm in the rest of your arguments when you're answering people from the audience. Yeah, I would like to make uh, three points very quickly to what we've heard before. First and foremost is the um, Yanis. Yes? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's on. Yes, can you hear me? OK, so the first issue that I want to talk about is the issue of debt. Uh, people said that it is a critical issue uh, for the government and the way that it is handling it. Personal opinion is that it's not a critical issue. It's an obstacle. It's a technical issue that is being put up against us uh, to force us to make decisions. The critical issue is the memoranda. They want us to make, take the austerity measures that they want to implement. Why? Because they want to restrict labor unions, because they want to restrict popular movements, because they want to res restrict, um, uh, because they want to make, they think that this way they will make the uh, Europe more competitive uh, in terms of, uh, in, in the uh, global markets. Um, other point I wanted to make is Lapavitsas. Uh, Lapavitsis uh, plan B, essentially, and the Greek ed exit. It's a very sound, extremely sound uh, pro uh, proposition that he is making. The problem, though, is that he is discounting the, the, the importance of the popular support. A, government, a Greek government right now, left Greek government, could take Greece out of Euro tomorrow. I would be very happy with, I would be fine with that. The question is though, what would you do when you have 70% of the population supporting staying within the European Union? You lost them. The issue is, can you stay longer? Fight the fight. Can you radicalize this part of the population to the point where they realize that they'll be better off outside and then take them out? Doing it now would be the wrong uh, time, in my opinion. Coalition government with an, uh, the independent Greeks. Again, we have to be very pra pragmatic. I mean, there are a lot of things that we want. We can get some of them. Uh, the, the day of the elections, w when the elections happened, the numbers came out this way, that Syriza had two choices. Either we'll form a coalition with some other of the parties that had enough uh, uh, votes to uh, get the majority in the parliament, or would have to call elections. Again, popular sentiment was against elections. If Syriza called, uh, failed to uh, call selection, that uh, failed to call the election, failed to form a government, then the command from by the president would go to the second party, and, the, and who knows what, what would happen? Actually, without Syriza, you wouldn't have a uh, government. But anyway, so the question was: Would Syriza want to force another election? That would be very anti-popular. We would lose the moment again. So, from the remaining parties within the within the parliament, who would they? Who could they vote? Who could they form a coalition? Well, the other party was Potami, which are liberals, uh, ex um, uh, social democrats, um, who knows what people who are not clearly anti-austerity, uh, not clearly against uh, the memoranda. So. W would we prefer to have a coalition with them? No, because they are more democratic, 
I don't even believe that they are more, de uh, more uh, democratic than um, the independent Greeks. Yes, there is a problem with the independent Greeks. Against is the time, the challenge of time. Give us more time to do the right thing, to get more popular support and more popular um, the, 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 the public on our side. And, you know, all these, are, these coalitions are formed and they can, you know, break any time. I, I want to say that I've given, I've given Natasha a little more time because she's got maybe a unique position here, and I wanted to be sure she had time to explain it. That doesn't go for the rest of the uh, and Natasha raised a very important issue about the coalition. It, it should be say, there is an element of that to what I think is, it's, it's correct. At the same time, we have to say that it's a very, it's an unstable uh, foundation on which this government is standing at the present time. Because at the critical moment, even though Anel has agreed to support the Thessaloniki program nominally, at a critical moment, they could pull the plug. And the key issue as well is that, we, so it has to be highlighted, uh, with a view that if we go into a new election, if the government stands firm, it should actually which make it enormously popular, hopefully we would win. But the point to highlight is the criminal, abstentionist, ultra-left position, the sectarian position that KKE, the Communist Party, has taken. It's a scandal. It's a scandal, unprecedented in many ways. They could have actually moved this government to the left if they had called for support to say, we, we will critically support on the basis of a united front policy, that's a Leninist policy, uh, uh, and so on, and calling and say, we will support parts of your program and we also will fight for further steps and so on. We'd have actually moved Syriza to the right. Their abstention is criminal position. Open the door for actually the Syriza, Syriza to say, uh, the leadership at the moment, to say uh, that they were uh, unfortunately, so we'll have to work. Because what's the alternative? The alternative would be, yes. I'm going to ask you a question, okay? The alternative would be to actually allow new democracy. I'm not yeah. You. I'm asking you something. Um, there are some people who say. Microphone? Need a microphone, Joy. <laughs> I'm addressing a question to Alan. Um, there are some people who say that Syriza did not sufficiently press the KKE to make the, the unification. And I, I think the answer that you may give is, well, KKE has a long, rotten, uh, sectarian history, which means they would have never entered the government. But I guess it is a question whether you think that the Syriza leadership took a moment to sufficiently press yes. uh, the KKE to, to enter the government and then expose them if they didn't? I think that, uh, I think that, I'm not going to speak about their subjective intentions, I don't know what, but, but Tsipras repeatedly actually he said that uh, we're in favor of a left unity government, repeatedly has said, he called for a left government, he specifically had asked Kutsumbas Day and the Communist Party to support. The first day he called him, Kutsumbas refused even to meet him on the basis of, the, of this. This political earthquake is taking place in Europe and they put their noses up in the air, say that there is no change. They, you know, and so on. This is the kind of, uh, of, of Stalinist lunacy that you see. This is the same, by the way. This is the same, by the way. This is the same party that until recently, until its recent Congress, actually had the position of endorsing any democratic bourgeois capitalist government that would come to power. Actually, they, they were part of the, of the government. They were part. They actually participated uh, with the government of a new democracy in the 80s and in the, in the 90s. They, uh, they actually had ministers and so on. And now, in the face of a left government, you know, it's almost Dostoevsky, and in the sense of the fool of Dostoevsky who's going crying in the weddings and so on. But it's a criminal policy uh, that they actually are going to pay very dearly in terms of the consciousness of the, of the, of the, of the, of the masses in the, next, uh, in the next period. One thing has to be said about the KK, however, unlike Andarcia, is a mass party with real roots in the, in the working class. Its leadership has a criminal policy, but it has a real mass base and so on. Andarcia is a little flea that actually split in the face of events. It's part of Andarcia when supporting uh, Syriza, quite correctly. Another part, after repeated zigzags where they didn't know whether they were supporting what and so on, it, they were, remained within prisoners of their phraseology of the previous period, you know, uh, uh, and so on. It, and it has to be drawn this line of, you know, about who are the real players and who are people who are, uh, you know, like forces that actually represent uh, very little in the, in the, in the, in the reality 
of the consciousness and the reality of the struggle. <laughs> so I, you know, that would be something to take a look at. Sure, of course. Um, can you, is this working? Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, it, under CS strength is not, it never has been uh, electoral. Uh, there are some unions where Andarcia has uh, more support than Syriza and the Communist Party. So people cannot dismiss, um, you know, an organization like Andarcia because. It's too but I disagree that the the coalition with the now. This is a perspective of the Dea comrades as well that that it was a, that it was a necessity. That it seems clear, I, and I do think that in a lot of ways the way it was handled sort of let the KK, the the, the, the Communist Party off the hook. That that. that that I, th I think it was possible to have what they call a, um, a, a, a vote of tolerance, to, to have a minority government on the basis of a minimal program, um, on the basis of what they call a vote of tolerance, um, and to really put the, put the pressure on, on, on the, 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 the Communist Party and force them to support uh, you know, the, a, a basic program of anti-austerity or face, or face the wrath of a, of, a, of a second election. That's a historical question at that stage, but I think it goes to the issue of whether the choice to go into government with Anel was a tactical one or represents something more strategic. And I think, the, I think there's a concern that it's, a, that it's, it's a, a bigger strategic orientation. Look, in the very short period of time the government's been in power, there's been some important things done the, the reversal of the privatization of the, of the port, the rehiring of the cleaners, some very important symbolic um, moves around the issues of, of reparations and the visit of the, to the memorial of the resistance fighters, um, and, and, and some important statements about, about, about um, immigrant rights and the rights of, 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 the, of what are essentially the dreamers in, in Greece, the native-born uh, immigrant ch children of immigrants. Um, in Greece and free electricity promises of free electricity to low-income people at the same time we need to think about this you know what if if the, if this if the decision to go into government with Anel does represent something more strategic there are other things we need to be looking out for in the future and I and we just need to be I know for example one of the concerns and, and this is a rumor at this stage I don't want to but the question of of, of who's going to be proposed to, to be the president of the Greek Republic there's been a lot of concern that 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 people that lead, some of the lead, former leadership of New Democracy, for example, might be proposed by by Cyprus, and this is a sort of undercurrent of debate around uh, around this issue. And so there's a real question as to what 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 Anel, what the decision to go into government with Anel represents um, going forward. So. Okay, I, I want I want to thank the audience for your patience, um, but I think it was worth it to sort of get some of the issues aired. So I'm going to um, take questions from the audience. You, can, you don't have to limit yourself to questions. You can make comments. But three minutes, and you saw what happened to Alan. You know, so, um, <laughs> um, OK, so let me see some hands. Nick. Thank you. Uh, do I just stand up and talk? Uh, I guess you have to come to the mic, right, because nobody will hear you. Three Thank minutes. You. Um, yeah. Oh. Yes, Aaron, I have to, I really have to disagree with uh, how you've presented this with the coalition because the fact is, let, let's reintroduce the Greek people or the Greek electorate um, into this discussion. They did not vote on January 25th an absolute majority for Syriza. They voted 35% for Syriza, 42% for the left, about 12% for center left who are pro austerity and about 12% for right-wing anti-austerity, including, unfortunately, the Nazis. So this is what you have to deal with. Caesar has 149 seats, and this is an illusion to think that minority governments can be sustained in the Greek political environment, especially a minority government of the radical left that's going to be attacked from the first day by the entire establishment, the media, um, you know, and the international um, so-called community, uh, the elites. So they had four choices and they were all rotten and the only choice available was the independent Greeks so they went with that you know because and you want to find you want to put the blame on somebody put it on the on the communist party on the KKE who made Syriza before the election into their main enemy they made that very clear that they were not going to have any kind of coalition otherwise Pasok and Potami are both a joke 
Okay, one minute. Thank you. I want to say that uh, you know I'm very skeptical about Syriza, but uh, what I've seen in the last 10 days has been absolutely remarkable. The way they've navigated the domestic landscape in Greece to try to get allies and starting right away from the beginning of immediately forming a government and not allowing it to be a crisis situation because you might still not have a government if they hadn't made that decision. But instead they went, they went straight ahead and they immediately challenged um, the EU and the debt. And I think it's been very successful right now. They are winning allies because if you want to leave the euro, if you want to, if you want to break the debt, you need to get more support than Syriza started out with after the election. If an election was today, Syriza would have that majority, without a doubt. Thank you. Do I see any female hands, I'm sorry, do I see any women's hands out there? Sherry. Probably could have been heard from back there. <laughs> I, I really do have a question. Um, I mean, it seems to me that what happened on January 25th is that the, the left won an election, but doesn't really control power. And what brought Syriza to the point of winning an election has been the social mobilizations and the strikes. And that a victory against the forces of the right that many of you have talked about, this tension, is not going to happen in Parliament. It's going to happen outside of Parliament. And so I guess I want to understand what is it, while these debates are happening about the here and now for the debt, what is happening on the ground to reformulate and reconstitute these social mobilizations that will be the absolute necessary leverage for the working class to actually put forward a program against austerity and ultimately win. Um, because that's, that's, of course, it seems to me a central question. And then correlation to that is, of course, the existence of the deep state, the existence of the delta force of paramilitaries um, that were, went after the strikes and the social mobilizations. What is, um, you know, people talk about a coup. I mean, frankly, I think playing with language like that is a little premature. What, what is the conversation on the left in terms of dealing with that deep state that persists in Greece? Thank you. I in the back. Uh, can people hear me? Yeah. Oh, good. No. No. Yeah, yeah. Can people you, hear me? No, but Charlie, come up yeah, here because because you won't be recorded. If you, you people, but Charlie, you won't be recorded if you don't. No, but it's not fine. There are people who are listening. Come on. My question is this. What is your question? I'll, I'll, I'll repeat. I'll repeat. Go ahead. I will, yeah. I really don't care. Can people hear me now? Yes. 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 Go ahead, Charlie. I'll repeat the question. My question, and it follows up on the last question, is for whatever reason, this government has come to power in a period of declining mass struggle. Whatever the reason that is, and the question I have is, given that I agree with the last speaker, this is going to be decided in the streets, not in the parliament. The question I have is, what is the capacity of the left platform at Sarisa and Antarisa to actually mobilize working people? What are their base in the trade unions, whether private or public sector, white collar or blue collar, in actual immigrant communities, et cetera? to be able to bring some power to bear when, in fact, the international community does cramp down on even the most mild anti-austerity measures. Okay, I'm going to take you know, two or three more because I think uh, I don't want it to be like where the audience is disappearing, but you'll be welcome to stay afterwards. So there'll be two or three more question comments, and then the uh, speakers will get to say something more. Um, okay, I don't know who you're... 
either the either place. Yeah. I guess <clears throat> this is a, um, I guess like the saying goes, not for something completely different. Because uh, this is not a question, it is a comment. Um, and I think there needs to be some basic truth spoken here. Um, the class character of Syriza is bourgeois. The class character of their coalition government, including with the right-wing anti-immigrant NL group, is bourgeois. To call for a vote to Syriza, whether explicitly, as the speaker from the ISO or the CWI did, or implicitly, as Antarcia does, is a betrayal of the interests of the working class of Greece that further ties them to their capitalist class enemy. This is not a step forward, but an obstacle to win the workers to socialist revolution. The Greek masses voted for Syriza in the hopes of getting some relief from EU austerity, they will be disappointed because this bourgeois government is beholden to the European centrally German imperialists and their banks. And it was the job of socialists to tell them that truth from day one. Syriza doesn't oppose the EU. It wants to stay in the EU, which is an imperialist conglomeration. It merely wants to renegotiate the terms of oppression. I am, in case you haven't guessed, is speaking from the Spartacist League. Oh. <laughs> U.S. section of the International Communist League. And our comrades in Greece, the Greek, the Trotskyist group of Greece, said no vote to Syriza, no vote to Antarcia, down with the imperialist EU, and underlined that the only way forward lies in class struggle and the fight for international socialist revolution and a socialist United States of Europe. In that light, we did give critical support to the KKE or the Communist Party of Greece, not least because in this election they drew a crude class line and said they opposed the EU, wanted Greece out of the EU, and actually tried to win people over to that perspective, and said no vote to Syriza. A coalition government, as is being proposed here, is a, is a popular front government. It is a government that would subordinate the workers to the capitalists, and that is what's criminal. Okay, thank you very much. I have a minute, you said. <laughs> that, was, that was a minute ago. Three minutes ago. Uh, I have 30 seconds more. I have 30 seconds more, so let me have my 30 seconds more. Our vote was critical. We denounced the KKE for the fact that they did not mobilize their mass working step, uh, class base on behalf of trying to stop the fascists. Okay, thank you. And that's what's necessary. So if you want the truth, pick up our paper, <laughs> Workers' Vanguard, and learn what is happening in Greece and what is the way forward to fight against imperialist austerity. Thank you. No support to the government. All right. All right. Well, um, let's see. Any more women's hands up out there? Women? Any women? I can't see very well. Is there some? Put two hands up if you're a woman. Who is it? In the red. To the right. To the right. To the right. My left. Do you see it? Yes, we know. Are you pointing at somebody? Okay, if there's no women, there's no women. Lauren. Take steps forward. Um, I, I guess for my question is be is how would we compare um, the similarities? Uh, I'm going to mention the things that we know are going on here in the United States. Um, the 15 hour for the 15 hour an hour minimum wage, uh, uh, with it, it decarceration, uh, man, Black Lives Matter. I mean, Code Pink for. Uh, international peace, um, environmental concerns like um, Monsanto and other related matters. Um, what are the best comparisons and, uh, and differences to what um, is going on in Greece? What are some of their major um, causes? Um, 
uh, what, what's, what I guess some of their organizations and chapters, what do, they, what do you know them to be doing uh, differently and s uh, similarly between uh, their economy and our economy? I know austerity, austerity is obviously a big concern in our, our economy, obviously, as well. Uh, if you could talk a little bit more about that. Thank you. I know Lauren is active as I am in the, in the Green Party and certainly the questions of the parallels between our struggles, weaker though they are, uh, with what's going on in Greece is important. Okay, I'm going to now give the speakers a chance to, to uh, answer quickly and then rest. please come up afterward. And I'm going to go in the order that you spoke initially so Natasha can be first, if you want to. Well, uh that's a few of the uh, questions. Yes, I, I'm going to use it. So um, the issue of the president that actually uh, put uh, was discussed by um, you, Aaron. Um, the, we don't know, but yet there hasn't been any formal proposal. We've heard a lot of rumors from here and there. I cannot speak, therefore, of who they're going to uh, choose for a president. The idea, though, behind uh, some of the choices that have been proposed, which are probably members of uh, the uh, uh, New Democracy, uh, the idea is that, first of all, the, the position of the president is, is, is just a figurehead. It's not, uh, it's not Im important. It doesn't have any power uh, in de deciding. Um, so the, the, idea, the idea was that they wanted, there, there is one uh, suggestion to put a person from new democracy in order to broaden the basis, in order to reach out. Uh, to the, uh, the electorate of uh, new democracy to show that there are no, uh, you, you know, uh, rifts between um, the the base uh, of the the parties. Um, but still, but really, this is just a conjecture because we don't really know who they are going to um, suggest for um, uh, government. I think that's what. Okay, before we go to the next one, I. Um, I, I hear a rumor that our comrades from Podemos are here. Um, if somebody is, would they please come up and just say a couple of words? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, well, this is going to be very, very short. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you on behalf of Podemos in the United States. Uh, for organizing this interesting event. And also, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate our colleagues from Syriza on their recent victory because we didn't have the time to, to congrat. And we trust them in their desire to improve the situation of Greece in their work, and we will try to learn and cooperate in this new adventure that we are uh, heading. I will leave this microphone before asking you to like us in Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our website is Podemos, E E U U. So E as an echo, E as an echo, U as an university, U as an university. Again. And follow us in Twitter in at Podemos, E E U U. We are preparing some events uh, this month, and we would love to have you all there. So thank you very much, everyone, for this incredible event. Also, before before the next person, Alan. Um, afterwards, a bunch of us are going to go to the Mall House, which is at 206 Thompson Street, the same street you're on, but down the block. So you're welcome to come and eat and drink if you'd like to. Alan. We'll have to continue this discussion. But the important questions that came up. It, it, it's very good, the point. It was an election, but not in power. In reality, this government imploded of new democracy uh, uh, in, uh, in, and so on. And actually the fact that it was a, a very, a very um, restrained uh, a reaction from the masses on the night of the victory even, there were only 5,000 people at the center of Athens celebrating. It was not a mass celebration. Actually the next week had you know, 300,000 in the streets of M Madrid you know, celebrating in many ways, electrifying the, uh, is, it had, the victory of Syriza in effect had a bigger effect at this point internationally rather than internally because the, bar, the, the level of expectations, and I will explain that 
Because that's a reality, rather than the la la land that uh, some people live in, in terms of what is actually uh, uh, happening. Greece had a profound, had 34 strikes, mass occupations, the movement of the square, record amount of tear gas and beatings uh, you know, took place. It was a colossal movement of resistance, but it was defeated. All the measures of austerity actually passed. Uh, and so on. And that is the reality. And it's a classic situation where the movement moved from the industrial front or the, or the movement of the streets to the electoral front to try to defeat this government of, the, of, the, of the new democracy. And they, the vehicle they chose, the masses chose, uh, as their reaction against neoliberalism and against capitalism at this particular was Syriza. That's actually the reality, the facts of life in terms of what this party uh, represents. And I think, I think we have to understand that that is, you know, at the moment. But that, however, event changes the situation, changes the balance of forces, and will open the space for the movements to, to reemerge. But there, is, there are problems in terms of the left in many, in many ways. The left is split. It's still it's fighting each other in many instances. It doesn't have a clear program in a clear, way, in a clear way forward. And I think that is going to be part of the reconstitution of the movements and a new left, a harder left, in the next period that's going to take, it's going to carry the, the movement forward. And I think that's one of the debates and some of the points I thought Nandina made, which are extremely significant that we have to address, is the issue of the real debate that's taking place. There's a real debate in many ways among the realist wing that says, it really reflects a kind of left Keynesian, to use that, to use a, a bit of academic, I don't like using academic language, but this is the kind of, uh, you know, if there is a left Keynesian view, that says, you know, wh why can't they see that's in ultimately the benefits even of ca the capitalist system itself to try to, uh, and they don't see that the reality actually, that that is actually not true. Actually, the capitalists will resist, and Germany and imperialism will resist to the very end because they realize they make concessions to Greece at the present time, any concessions, that will open, the, uh, that will open Pandora's box in the next period in terms of the demands of the Spanish, proletariat in terms of Italy and a whole series of countries in Europe that will demand an end to austerity and an end to the attacks that are taking place. I want to remind people because a lot of the hot air of the ultra left that comes up and will come up again and again about the state of affairs. I want to remind people that actually real movements actually start from simple demands. People confuse of course February and October typically but actually it starts from even small demands that appear reasonable and, and so on. For example, you have the, in, in 1917 in Russia, you had the demand of, in February of saying we want to appeal to the Tsar, you know, yeah, it was, you know, to just grant us a little bit of a reprieve they were, they were demanding. It was a perfectly little demand, but it was opening the floodgates of the movement. The same with the civil rights movement, such a simple demand, and so why can't you be reasonable? Why can't we reason about this? And yet the implications actually, because the sets, the masses, in motion where they can actually learn lessons. I will finish on this because I want people to get a bit of a flavor of what the European bourgeoisie, since our brother here wants to use the, the fancy uh, uh, French words, you know, they, they, is, is do they don't know what they're fucking with in Greece. I will tell you this, as somebody who comes from a family that has given victims to the struggle, they don't know what they're, they're playing with fire at the present time. These are the people who actually in the course of the German occupation went on general strikes. These are the people that gave the highest ratio of deaths in the course of the Second World War in terms of hunger and so on. This is a movement that actually liberated during the Nazi occupation three quarters of the country with a, with a most successful arguably guerrilla movement before it was stabbed in the back by the Stalinists at that, uh, at that stage. They don't know what they're fucking with in the next period. No matter what actually, even Tsipras, and I'll say this as a member of Syriza, I, in many ways, the decisive issues in the next period about the process of the, of the Greek and European revolution will be decided on the streets in terms of the masses re-entering the scene of history. Starting from perfectly reasonable little demand, why can't we have a little less austerity? And yet that demand is going to be to be what's going to set Europe afire in the next period. Thank you. Um, I just, uh, I really cannot uh, agree with the uh, opinion that the labor movement in Greece has been defeated when it has installed the first radical left government 
since Chile. I find that a very hard statement to swallow. So I, I, I just can't go down that road. Um, but what happens now is tremendously important. If the movements are not reignited, because you're right, they are on pause. I don't think we've lost. People waited for the election. They are giving some time to seize uh, the government to, to, to you know, see how it will handle the debt issue. Those struggles are going to start picking up. And as Sherry's question was, what are the concrete next steps? There is an, uh, the concrete next step is on February 11. We will try to reopen Earth. It has worked as the movement's uh, media since it was shut down in, tw in tw uh, 12, 2013. Uh, broadcasting the movement's demand, and now we have to return the favor. So that's the next step. And then after that, uh, the anti-fascist continu uh, struggle continues because there's still a serious threat of fascism in Greece, and an election cannot finish that. So that's what I think. Uh, about that. I'll address quickly the question of social mobilizations and cities as base and the popular classes. Uh, I think we have to look at really the decade-long trajectory of social movements in Greece, starting with the student occupations of uh, 2006 to 2007 into 2008, where youth basically took over the streets of Athens for a month. Then into 2010, the general strikes. 2007, Sindagma. And Sindagma was very important because it showed that even where you, in a country where the private sector has a union rate of no more than 15%, people are willing to experience, experiment with new forms of organization. And Syriza and other parts of the left, including Adarsia, show their willingness to engage with that. And I think now's the challenge to take those kinds of organization uh, mixed with the more kind of um, sectoral leverage that you get with unions uh, to give really the government the kind of leverage that it needs. In terms of Syriza's base in unions, uh, it's not the kind of base that we traditionally identify with social democratic governments of the post-war period or even of the Communist Party in Greece, historically. Uh, but I think Syriza activists are working very hard to build that relationship and they formed a labor federation, Metan, uh, almost in the way that Kukwe had formed a labor federation in the 1990s. And I know some activists in that federation, and they joined Syriza after 2012, right? They're not core cadre members. And they joined because they thought that this was really um, their only hope. So of course they're critical of certain aspects of the official line, but they're trying to organize around that. And I'm just going to put a plug in for a friend uh, Katie fox Odesh. she's also a graduate student at Berkeley and she's going to be interviewing uh, one of the Syriza activist members in the Dock Worker Union in Piraeus, which as you know, uh, Syriza has halted the privatization of. And uh, I hope to see that interview soon because she's going to be asking him questions about Syriza's relationship to the labor movement and uh, I hope we can see more of that kind of work. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I want I, to, to, to uh, add something to the, to the answer to Charlie's question about the, the base. I thought Kovalakis had some interesting um, points about, about the, the, the sort of changing, uh, changing shape of the electorate between 2012 and, 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 and a couple weeks ago, um, making the point that, uh, that you know, significant, significant um, there was significant base of support in 2012 in in in, a, in, in some speaking in Turkish speaking minority um, um, constituencies and some of the kind of core working class um, constituencies former Pasok Belt um, Piraeus um, and 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 that's that's remained but a lot of the growth this was the point Kovalakis was making a lot of the sort of electoral growth uh, this time around represented a sort of broadening of of the base. Um, and, and, and what he called se uh, rural and semi-urban areas in middling provincial towns. Um, and he went so far as to, 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 ca to characterize its electoral base as, a, as, as one of a cross-class party. Um, 
And so it's not that it's not that the that the that the uh, that the that the that the working class base um, shrank in any significant way, but that the that the that the that the growth, the broadening, represented a kind of uh, a, 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 a class broadening of its of its support. Um, I think that's I think that's that can be a, that can be a good thing. I think I think um, I I do have concerns about uh, about Natasha's response to the question of 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 offering the you know uh, sort of um, the offering the presidency this, this even if it is just a symbolic um, choice to the to the leadership of new democracy um, I think there's real questions about about what's the process by which you know you can you can you can gain hegemony for the left um, in Greece and it's clear and I, and I agree with 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 Nikos that it doesn't have it there's a reality on the ground that that's that that's that that's that that's that's just there, but I, I'm discomforted by um, by by the idea that this is going to be this is going to be gained by, through through coalitions with Anel and um, uh, um, you know handing symbol even symbolic power to to to, to former you know uh, political leaderships of the big bourgeoisie in in, in Greece. Um, let me just let me just end by by where I where I started originally, which is to really plug. Um, the Greece Solidarity, um, AKNY, and Y, and the work that we're doing here in New York, because if people want to be um, active in, in 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 support of the of the Greek struggle here in New York, that's really the place to plug in. We have a, we have this event on February 11th, which I'm sure uh, Joanna was going to mention. We've also historically done mobilizations on the day of inter International Day of Anti-Fascist Action in March. There's been some very important work against the Golden Dawn here in the United States. Um, so I really want to encourage people. Uh, to, 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 to come and join us, and thank you for coming out. Okay, you, you stole my uh, re-announcement of the February 11th demonstration, but please come. If you sign that yellow sheet, you'll hear about it. Um, and as far as tonight's discussion is concerned, I'm pretty satisfied. I don't know about everybody else, but I think it was a really, uh, A model for